Hey everyone, it's Joe Dezayas here from The Automator, and uh, this is like episode 36 of What We Automated with AutoHotKey, and Isaias is working on Sunday, yay! So uh, mm-hmm. I asked him to join me, and Isaias, why don't you go ahead and share your screen, uh, and let's, first off, we were, I was going to get you to um, launch the recently modified scripts, and, I, and I'm like, oh, you probably don't have that in Prompt Assistant. I don't have the tool, right, yeah. yeah let's uh, let's yeah, show yeah, how right. easy it is to add a script, you know, to something right. in the Prompt Assistant. So this is for prompt system, right? So, um, but before, let me make it, let, let me make the script, you know, the screen a little bit bigger because I probably see that the text is very small, yep. right? So we do have this tool. We I, you always use it when we go ahead and um, do videos, the quick DPI, DPI scaling tool. It allows me just to set up some hotkeys um, for, for uh, where is it? I have some hotkeys that when I press them, it just sets the screen DPI to a given you yeah. know size, and I would just go it's, with this which, one. The... We should we need to go count them, but that's what like eight clicks probably in Windows oh, yeah. to change your DPI. Right, right, like, like right clicking, go into display settings, go into the monitor that yeah. you want to change. It's really annoying. It's really but now annoying. I just a yeah. hotkey just goes and does. Like, it, you get so. to define right, like, right, exactly. That's the cool thing, right. So here in Prompt Assistant, I can go to any sub menu. It could go. It could go to the top level if I wanted to. The thing is that I have a sub menu called Tools, in which I just have other scripts that I run. Right, and um, the point is, I'm gonna add just one more, and I'm gonna run it with V2. Is that a? It doesn't matter if it is a V2. Right. So give me just, just a second. It. Right. Okay, so what what I'm going to do in this case, it doesn't matter what I run it with because um, I'm going to run without a hotkey v2 and I'm going to give it a path, right? So the path is going to be to the file that I want to just launch, right? So let's look for it. You said that it's on the S drive. How is it called? Yeah, recently uh, recently modified Uh, something like the other. This guy? So I just copy the path. Well, if you used to get active path, that'd be another hotkey you could hit. Right, yeah, that's another, yeah, it's a hotkey thing, right? And that's it. Uh, I'm just telling, hey, run another hotkey script that would go ahead and launch this guy. And I will call it recently. It it wants you to change the icon just to show how simple it is to change the icon. Right, we can just change the icon to something else. And we have a a, a bunch of icons out there um, for different programs and stuff like that. It doesn't matter what it is. You just pick an icon and yeah, we save it. There you go. That's it. Now that one has the icon. It finishes saving. And now when I look at my tools here, I will have that. That when I click on it, it will launch the tool automatically. So this is really just that simple. It's not going to take too long to, to add, add to your list. And that's it, right? So. That already gives me a list of the recently modified files, um, different sizes, different things. So I usually just let's just go ahead and look for it. Yeah, right. So that that first one, you know, Danny, our client. So the first several here are client work stuff, but we can at least talk about what we're doing for them without showing the code, right? Danny, he's a radiologist, and he initially said, like, here are four files that I'm constantly working on, and then. We would do something, and, and he's working right up to the second because he, he needs to be productive at work. But we would make changes, and then later on in the day, he's like, crap, one of the things we did broke what we're doing. And and thankfully, we've been able to to go update it. We had we weren't on other client calls because when we are, we can't just do that. But yeah, he said, why don't you guys, you know, well, we, were, we said, let's start backing up those files before we work on them, right? And then... Because I was just envisioning, we do like me, I'll just drag it into an old file, right? I'll create a copy right. of it. Yeah, and that yeah, way yeah. I just, just drag and drop. That's it, right. <laughs> and then he's like, well, you know, come on. We're, we're using auto hockey. Let's do a little more robust thing. So right. we wrote a script that it's a, it's it's very simple, but it, it looks at the date modified. And if that current file is newer than the one that we have, we go create a backup of it. So it checks right. um, every time it runs. Now, he wants it just to run once a day. You could have a single right. all the time. Um, but it checks it anyway and backs it up for him. So now he has different versions of it automatically that he can go Back restore. Up, right, which is interesting because this script, the recently modified files, does something very similar in which it looks through the files 
yeah, checks right. the the the, the sure. modified timestamp, right? And the other one is doing something similar, is checking on the modified timestamp uh, and comparing it to the last one we saved. Uh, so it is interesting that that idea comes up very often. Of yeah. hey, I just need to take a look at when the thing was modified. Now the um, the text cut. This was really interesting because he we were done with our call and he's like, hey Joe, this is really annoying. This editor. He's like, I can't drag text. It doesn't have the drag functionality. And he's like, and, and also, he's like, for the love of God, I don't want another hotkey. He's like, I want a way that'll do this without learning another hotkey because he's got so many of them. And right. um, and I was trying to explain to him, like, we need some sort of trigger because the actions you're doing, you do a lot. Like, you don't realize it, but the way you're doing it, those actions, you do it a lot. And then I remembered Isaias and I talking a couple of weeks ago and I, do you remember how it came up as a about the whole can we detect the left and right mouse button down at the same time without a hockey no, i don't, I don't remember what we were talking about it the the point is that you you made a question like hey can i use those two keys as a hotkey like both of them as a hotkey and i said sure that that's something that is doable the only thing is that true i have never heard anybody talking about that like i've right. never used that <laughs> yeah. right like who yeah. comes up with clicking both, like left yeah. and right at the same time would be your hotkey. And so, it is, so yeah. Yeah, it takes a little getting used to, but we made it where he can double click and select his tech, not double, sorry, and that's what Irfan, he was working on it with me. He kept saying double click. I'm like, no, 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 you, you can click both, right? Because double clicking both obviously- at the same time, right. <laughs> different thing. So you hold down both, drag and select, then you let go of your left mouse button and you move your mouse where you want it, and then you let go of the right button. And then it would actually- Oh, wow performs the action to cut the text, go to where the mouse was, and paste it. So that was, and even though you could say, well, Joe, that is a hot key, it was a simple one, and it still didn't, it only involved one hand, because that's where he's he's working. And that's, that's the point, right? No. <laughs> when you have this control shift H, you know, right. control shift P or something, right. you have to use two hands to press yeah. it, right? But if you have a hot key that is just one hand, it usually is easier to remember, but he probably has all of those taken already. So if you, you know, use the other hands instead, <laughs> right? Right. Now, this is still on topic for Danny because we, we were we were chatting and he actually replied back and said that he doesn't use one, but most people do. Because I'm like, well, why doesn't he have a foot pedal? Like, you know, oh, yeah, we, we I, talked I, about that too, right? Yeah, he yeah, always, yeah. And, and then now what it just occurred to me is this is like, I'm going to have to order one, not because. I want to use it like they would of like, hey, I want to turn the mic on or off, right? That's how most right. apparently radiologists do it of like, if I want the mic listening to me or not. But could we use it as a modifier, right? Could Dude, we that's actually- a good question. That'd be really interesting, right? Like now right. suddenly you can be like, well, I have to put, I have to press this with my foot and do something and have a whole no, nother- but, but just imagine like, like, no, no, but just think about it. Your whole keyboard, if you press your, your foot pedal, now your whole keyboard becomes a set of hotkeys. Right. You know right. what I mean? That that's insane. Yeah, like, right. You, you have, right. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, it, you don't have to press Control F because right. if you hit the pedal and hit F, that's your hotkey. You know what I mean? So if, if they yeah. could be used as as a modifier key, that's insane because yeah. well, I, I I guarantee they could. The only thing that our hotkey has to do is capture that input right. from that thing, which. We determined that it was possible when we were playing with the multiple keyboard things. Like we can detect input, what is called raw input. So right. I guess it's not impossible, right? That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna. I had one in my cart just in case because we're working with a lot of radiologists. Um, I'm gonna order it both for them, but also for us to test this because I, I think that's really an interesting idea. Um, right. So all right, let's keep get back here now. For Kevin, he's a like a lawyer accountant kind of thing. He testifies in court, and we were automating looping over court cases to see to find other court cases that were similar in nature and under so he can understand the other lawyers and law firms that work in his area, meaning topically, not well, both ge geographically too, because he's tied to a certain area location, but um. So Irfan worked through with Rafidium to, to automate going through that. It took us a little bit of time to find a way to do a generic search because you had to have either like the plaintiff name or the lawyer name or the case number. And we we're like, well, crap, we don't have any of those. You know, like, how are we going right. to do this? 
And you could do like an in search, but it you needed quite a bit of stuff and it wouldn't otherwise it wouldn't match. But I finally found a way after playing with the website to uh, I basically filtered it on the judge, I think is what it was. And that okay. brought up all of the judges' cases. And so we had that list of all it's a drop down for the judges. So it made it very okay. simple. But um yeah, that we're working on that. The um let's get down to the dark, dark title bar now. In our actually um well, we'll get to it here in a bit. The um the HK the Flexi Finder tool we wrote, we created a dark theme version of it, and right. that was when I was like, "Well, hey, can we change the title bar so it's dark instead right. of like, here at the top?" Right. Yeah. This this would be the title bar here at the top, and this is something that the default one from, and we call it a caption as well. So the caption includes the title bar. Is basically what. Yeah. The caption is the title bar plus the buttons. Now the point is that this is kind of like a standard window that every single window is created with that, unless there are tool windows or other special windows. And this bar is usually not modifiable directly. Right. So I suggested something else. Well, I, which, hold on. I, I found yeah. a post from Lexicos, which had uh -huh. both a V1 and a V2 version, and uh -huh. it had different versions for Windows 10 and Windows 11. And mm -hmm. so... On one of them, I think Windows 10, it actually did it. Um, but with mm. Windows 11, it was borrowing our theme, if I remember correctly, and we couldn't get it to. Right. to but anyway, so what was what were you? Yeah, well. Well, my 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 other suggestion was like the, the ones that I have seen people doing is they recreate the bar because it's not that difficult. It's just yeah. an icon, text, yeah. and three buttons. But as you recreate it yourself, then you have full control so, over the color, the size, sure. and everything. So right. Yeah. So when that happens, I'm just curious, because right now in here, your client area is your list view, basically, right? Because that doesn't well, include... Well, 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 sorry, let me, let, me, let me do this. The client area, let me make it this color, would be from this point, sorry, oops. Right. From this point right. up to this point. That's the client area. Is right. everything that is not the title bar. Right. Really. But, right. but that's my question is, if you are removing the title bar, right now you have to make space. <laughs> exactly, you you will put the title bar inside the client area, basically, right. and then you will have to put all the other things below. Well, now um, that is not um, difficult because as soon as you start putting icons, everything will shift down. That's totally fine. Yeah, the problem is getting it to look like what you want. You well, know, my my main point was. Then you're also going to have to remember your client area isn't what you think it is because right exactly now is the whole thing right the whole the whole program the whole visual thing is the client area so yeah, yeah it is a very interesting concept and I think uh, definitely doable definitely something that I can uh, I yeah. think you know a text control a text control is good enough these because you can make a text control that size. Right. And that's the text of it. But the background color, you can change it to whatever you want. And then sure. you just put an icon right before the text. Right. That's it. Yep. But it is just a text control with the background color in it. And then you just slap three buttons at right. the end of the control. That's it. Yeah, it was it is it is possible. It was beyond the scope of that FlexaFinder tool because right. I'm like, people aren't going to care that much about it. Right, but, right. Uh, yeah, I know I've seen, and I know years ago talking to Maestri, he, he did it with a lot of his stuff because he he's one of those that does care. I have this little white bar and he wants everything black, right? Like, but most people <laughs> yeah. are like, it's it's close enough. Right. So, um, anyway, the uh, that GUI test was still working with that same thing. The uh -huh. the GDI blur. Now let's, let's go ahead and go to that folder. Let's let's launch. Now it's, we got closer. Irfan did some good stuff on um, I think the blur itself, yeah, that's the most recently modified one, if I remember right. So Hopefully, you can launch it. I don't know if you guys already changed that, but it shouldn't be left shift, left mouse button. Yeah, it, you can select it now. Well, I, I believe there's a preference. Go ahead and launch ah, it. Okay, that you can change it. Okay, right. So this is what. Whoop, that's interesting. Hold on. Yeah, one thing I was trying to figure out is. So this thing, okay, I, I have to explain what is going on. Um, wherever I click, the blur is moving to the right. Oh, oh, no, hold on. I know what it is. 
are I have my D, my DPI settings are off. Oh, and it's maybe not that would, for... maybe yeah, maybe maybe it's not accounting for that. Oh shoot! Hold on, let me let me set this to one hundred. Right now, let's run it, and this now should be locked to that yep. window. So that should that is working, and you can have multiple as well. Right, that's what we noticed. And also, he didn't implement it yet, but we should be able to hit like escape and have those disappear. Because <laughs> right you now, have to go like clicking. Least... Right now, you have to double click them. Oh, you is that what it was? That that's right, right, right. You have to double click there that's... for that. I would be like, which maybe I think escape is, escape is better. Escape? Like, right, yeah. right, escape is better. Now, the one that is not GDI is the one that is not locking anymore. I, that's, I that's used good. it earlier, and it was it was for me, so that's interesting. But let's let's not worry okay. about it. But yeah, you get the idea. But, but, but this one is a very great script. We we still have to brush out some issues with it. Hold on, exit that. Right. Yeah, and obviously change the icon. Right, of course, but 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 it's a really great. I like it how it, it. We, right. we we we. I think we're gonna in the end remove the black border or not. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. No, 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 I don't want to. Right, and the right. the the non GDI one doesn't have a border. I I noticed that. Right, that's right. Like the the other one, I I like how the other one looks. Right. Well, it, the other one, it's just too blurry though for me. I it, I like the effect that one has, but the other one, it's so blurry. Wow. It's so obfuscated, it, you don't even have a clue what's behind it. Right. It's, it's not like, because, let me see, let me see what you mean by this. So when I do this, I at least, oh, sorry, I at least have the idea of, yeah, it was text and there's a right. highlighted it's line highlighted. there and so on. So, so it's kind of like, yeah, it looks very similar to what it was before is what you mean, yep. right? All right. Now, the nice thing about the other one is after you draw it, you can move it, and it's it's still blurring where you move it. It's like a layer that right. sits on top, which is pretty cool, right. too. Right, so, which I like, yeah. I just I wish really you like that. And, and maybe we can still work on trying to, because I tried in the, the blur, there was also transparency level stuff, and uh, I was adjusting them, and they didn't seem to do anything. So we're, again, we're it's a work in progress, right? But right. that's what we're working on. Um, Excel data. This was, this was fun. yeah, I asked, um, it was, it's really, well, well, we're supposed to be making a video on it and I, it, we've been so busy. I just told Rizwan, I said, you know what, go ahead and manually, just not manually, but go fix all the cheat sheets. I kept one to show in our example of how you can do regular expressions in, in Excel. Right. Um, but that's why that files error was we first wrote a script to show how you can easily get the selected column, get the text out of the row. And then of course, we're right. going to do a regex to replace the stuff because the cheat sheets we had where we borrowed from, stole, um, a lot of them had <laughs> stuff referring to like Mac. They had, hey, for Windows do this, for Mac do that. I'm like, all of our clients are Windows based. Let's right. remove the stuff, the other stuff. So Rizwan right. actually went through and just did them, but but I kept one um, so we could have it to play with. Right. And then there's the process of the rest of FFmpeg, which we're going to probably rename, right? Yeah, well, there's the one right above it. We didn't get to that one yet. The, oh, the, the Ripper. Ripper. Yeah. All right. I thought that all of that was in the same... Uh, yeah, well, I, I know. Same I'm starting name. with the, in order, or I'll oh. forget. Um, right. So the Ripper, which it just goes through and rip... And actually, we came up with a great name for it. Um, Crazy Fast Ripper, I think is what we called it. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, because I first, I found like, MP, no, MP3 Ripper dot com was available and wow. i'm like oh that's a good one i'm like but this one's crazy fast and i'm like yeah crazy fast, fast ripper river. or fast mp3 ripper i think was available and i'm like but it's crazy fast so i'm like you know what right. even though fast mp3 ripper is shorter and i'm like crazy fast mp3 ripper it just i'm like i gotta get it like so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. but this <laughs> one and actually this one i also asked for this one to work on to make it um, recursive. So if you drop a folder on there with videos, it will recursively uh, go over all the videos and extract me, all the files um, uh, to so MP3 this, files. This is a green, oh no, hold on. Give me a second. Uh oh. Okay, it's trying to access an icon that I don't have. Whatever that is. Yeah, someone must Just have hard-coded it, yeah. Right, 
So um, yeah, you can select your file folders, what you need, the audio, what, but um, basically that would be the, the um, quality of the audio, right? right. Uh -huh. And then it would just get the audio out of any file. So it doesn't matter if it's a video then. You, you, you can drop videos that's, on it or- That's true. That's true. Because I, I initially it did, and then I'm like, well, wait a minute. I have an MP3 file that's 256K and I wanted it to be um, 128. And I'm right, like, yeah. why Why am I restricting this to only to videos? So we- Right, we it, it could be, yeah. yeah, it could be audio or videos right. and it would just convert them to whatever. Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah, so there's that one. And then the, yeah, this one, I forget what we named this one. We came up with a new name for it. If you look at the code, it's it should be in the code now. I, the I new code, um, in the actual syntax. Says, uh, I Just don't see it. Do you have it on the other screen? <laughs> no, no, hold on. Well, just just. No, I was just I was just looking at the at the coding here. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't see the name. That's weird. I I thought he already updated that. All right. Um, but anyway, oh, that's the no license. Go to the other one. This one here. Yeah, that's probably the one he was updating it on. Nope, not yet. Okay, but we did come up with a, a new name for it. Um, it's I right. forget what it's called, but this one, it's um, just mind-boggling how well it, it, and often like our Zoom calls, it'll shrink them down often at least in half, and sometimes, and you can explain more of why. I understand why now, but just from talking to you. If it's mostly screen sharing, it's it's down to like ten percent of what the original right. size was. It's insane. Right. It is amazing. So uh, the idea here is that it, you can choose the encoder for uh, the video and so on. And usually, even if you even if you use, for example, OBS, OBS uses um, the the H two six four encoder and so on. The problem is they encode additional stuff into the video. That they need, and when you run it through FFmpeg directly, it removes all that. It just stays with the video, right? Just because of that, it actually drops the file size a lot. And I would also say the audio quality also makes the 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 size of the video drop by a lot. And then big files, you can see a drastic change from what, five gigabytes to, I don't know, like 800 megabytes and stuff yeah, like that. That's right. crazy. Very common. And I'm like, how does that happen? Yeah. But um, even even smaller files that you say like 20 megabytes, they can get dropped down to five, nine megabytes in most cases. And you're like, wow, that's insane, right? So let me ask you, because this will be a fun one. We look at the code a little bit. I mentioned to Irfan that, hey, the tooltips were staying on the screen. And I said, I, I know you showed me of like, no, oh, I'll tell Irfan it's these messages to watch for. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I didn't really look at what you said. I heard you and I know you took a screenshot of it. I didn't really right. look. So I'm like, I don't remember right. what they were and we couldn't find it. So he went through yeah. it. Yeah. And, and once he, you look at the code it. and let's see right. if he got it, what you would have done. All right. Let's see. It's still not working. Oh, okay. But, but well, this, hold on. Is, is that the... Well, I'm not sure if this is the one with no license, I guess. Yeah, because, he may not have updated yeah. that one. Yeah. Right. Okay, so the point here is um, while you are inside an our hotkey script, there's a lot of messages that the program sends to Windows, to the operating system, and we can capture those messages. So while you move the mouse, there's a message called on mouse move. And one of the things that we do if the mouse is moving is checking which control is under the mouse and if it is one of the ones that we care about, then we can go ahead and display kind of like a tooltip while the mouse is on top of that. And if I move off out, it just goes away. Now, the thing is that if your mouse is displaying the tooltip, but your mouse leaves the window, now we cannot capture the messages. And now we don't know. So let me see. Oh, look at that. Actually hovering over it, it goes. But if you go away, like you, you cannot, AutoHotKey cannot capture the mouse location. It cannot tell whether the mouse is on top of a controller or not because we are outside of our script, right? Mm -hmm. When that happens, 
what happens is when the mouse leaves the window, there is a message that is sent to the operating system. And we can see it here. Um, if we go to the messages, um, WM messages, you will find WM mouse leave. That's the one that I'm referring to. I think that was it because the one right above it, I remember there were two where like they both say mouse leave. One had that NC, the other one. Right. The NC is not correct. This is just for, for when you're kind of redrawing a window or some other special conditions. And um, I would so, use the ones that says NC. There's a lot of them that are like that. The second one, just for fun, uh, copy that one and go look in the, the licensed version and see if that has that text. Yeah, it, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, cool. And um, what? All right. I'm not sure. Maybe we need to tweak how it's been implemented, but at least we got the right thing. No, no, that's that's fine. Yeah, you got you got the right one. That's exactly the one. And um, here it is. He's capturing when the mouse is moving and when the mouse is leaving the window. So if the mouse leaves the window, it just goes ahead and destroys the tooltip before that happens. Uh, and that's only in the license version, which is why it yeah, wasn't it is in the license. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, but yes, no. it is. Th that's basically the simple solution to that. And interestingly, I didn't know this, but if you hover over the tooltip, it just disappears as well by itself. I didn't know that. That's yeah, funny. So, yeah. So but yeah, basically, this is this is a, this list right here. All of these guys you can use with on message and do crazy things like yeah you know, look Very whenever powerful. you set a hotkey the program sends a message to the operating system you can capture that uh when you copy Which data is, when you do... i think it was from nursoft right and someone who has a tool that they can tell you a hotkey has been registered it doesn't tell you the program but it just tells you these key combinations have hotkeys registered to them Right, which right that must which be what they're very, tapping into. Very right? interesting, right? But uh, if, as you can see, there's a lot of interesting things when you click the button down, the left button down, button up. When you double click, the, all of those little things are messages. Well, Actually, uh, we talked about this a while back. Like almost anything you think of in an right. operating system boils down to a message oh, wow. being sent from one place to another. Which is what I was going to mention was, I guess my dog wants to say hi. Um, what I was going to mention is auto hockey itself is just wrapping all this stuff and making it easier, right? And then right. people like Lexicos have decided what to wrap and what not to wrap. Now, you might right. be using something in auto hockey and you're like, oh, it doesn't have this functionality. But you might be able to come in here to use messages and to be able to do it still. It's just not built into the direct auto hockey stuff, right? So this is why I tell people auto hockey, it's an amazing language. Like you can, a beginner person that doesn't even understand programming can do very basic stuff. And then advanced people can also do whatever they very want. Very advanced stuff. Right, that is correct. Um, a very good example of that is with the um, menu select command uh -huh. for auto hotkey. Oh, right, too. yeah. Right. So we, 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 we refer to it as menu select, and it's really easy to use and very convenient. You don't need to use it. You can just send the message to the menu item if you know the item, the menu uh, handle ID, and that's it. And, and this is the cool thing. For me, for writing the code, it's easier to say win menu, uh, menu select and put the path to the menu that I want to select. But that doesn't mean that I cannot do it other ways. And that with the messages, that's anything you think of, you can probably send a message and it will work somehow. Right. So yeah, um, the remove met metadata, I think that you 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 kind of like hard-coded it into yeah. process through FFmpeg as well, right? Well, we included or, or the, you have that as a, as a separate tool. It, it's both. We included right, it in, exactly. as a preference in the FFmpeg tool, be, uh, the process through, because... Sometimes you want to both process and remove metadata, um, but sometimes, like if you go up to the menu. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So oh, okay. Yeah, because I, I've seen it before, down here before. I didn't know that. It's it's that to make the menu, because that's more of a preference of like, hey, I, I always want this or I don't want that, right? Right, um, right. So that way they're, the GUI is simpler. Right, um, right, yes. 
But sometimes you don't. The last thing you want to do is to reprocess like a, a four hour film. You just want to remove the metadata. And that's why I said, right. no, you right, still right, want to right, have right, it separate. Right. So yeah, it, and it removes a lot of times you'll have tags or titles or authors or artists and whatever. And see, I, I was talking to Zace about this earlier today. I, I watch a lot of videos on my Roku TV and this computer yes. is a media server and it will pull up. It doesn't pull up the name of the video. It pulls up the quote unquote title if it has one. And yeah, often sure, it will yeah. have crazy long titles. And I'm like, this is annoying to manually go remove it. So this tool, you can, it's recursively can drag over files or folders and it just rips it out and cleans them up. So yeah, it's a very cool little tool. All right, here's FlexiFinder, which this one also, this is really, we had to rename it because initially it was like an auto hockey search tool. But now um, we made it because I'm like, this is something the the destinations are right now mostly around coding, but they don't have to be. So um, you wow. get to go in your preferences. So go to the preferences and you can edit this list. Well, to make that a different. Why do you, why do you put preferences? Just pre I just I said just <laughs> yeah. put it. That is fine. Yeah. Um. Yeah. um Right. So these so, are the places that you want it to search. All right, and this is just a text. So, so I just put a, a URL in here. Right, for right. where you want to search, and then it then you can choose your search engine. And also here, obviously, you can see you have the dark mode or not, and the size of font and your hotkey. But um, what? then when you which if you can remember what the hotkey is, um, you can yeah, hit it. That was interesting. Okay, so when I apply, it closes the whole thing. I thought it would just close the... Yeah, it should. Not it, should leave up, it should leave up the other it one. It should leave this one here, yeah. It just closes both. Right. I think because um, it's starting the script, is my guess. It does? I, I think I think that's why, but we'll... we'll we he, can he, he, oh, no, no, no. He destroys the GUI, but he should create it again and show it again then. If I switch the dark mode, I think any, nothing else... Oh, nothing else. Well, oh, no, it does. Oh, wow. But it, it never comes back up. Which is right. the point. Okay, right, right. fine. All right. But, but so also, then, so yeah. select some text. Actually, you, well, that'd be weird. Um, go, go, no, go to, go to something else, like your toolkit or whatever. Yeah, type um, single license force or whatever. There you go. Now select it. Now hit your hotkey. Well, I don't know if it's going to work with it up like that. Oh, yes. look at that. Yeah. So it'll automatically pull that in. And then, of course. In here. Okay, yeah. so. so. So if I close it, so if I don't have anything selected, let me see, and I hit control insert, it just brings up the thing and I can type and search, right? But if I have something selected, it would bring it into my box here so I can just go into the search. Trouble. Right. Right. And right. You get to, of course, out of those three, you can choose your search engine out of those three, which is probably 99.9% .9 of what people use, one of those three. Um, and let me, let me see it. when you say one of those three hold on if the Which google mean? oh at the bottom yeah okay yeah yeah that's it right um but then you can also you put the check boxes on which destinations you want to use that search tool to search right okay so i can i, I can look up message box in the autohotkey.com page and the youtube page right and then just go ahead and search on those two right now interestingly enough and i remember you guys working on this um you probably want those saved so if they i exit the script saved. and then come back again right so if saved. i exit and then go back it should have my oh it was sticky <laughs> it was before yeah so well, probably something changed so uh, it might not, i think it saves it on the search because okay. yeah. so you got to search uh, i think i think i think it should change it as soon as i click on that yeah, Which well, is not that hard. Like the same thing that he's doing with the search, we just put it to the list view. No. Whenever you check, it would just yeah. Save we could that. spend twenty more hours on this tool as well. And anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, it, no, but in this case, so if I change this now, I go ahead and exit or relaunch, reload the script. You don't have to reload. Just hit your hotkey. Yeah, right. I. What I wanted to know is if I exit the script completely and come back in, which is why I reloaded, it should still stay sticky, right? So it doesn't matter that I restarted my script or anything. No, they should stay 
selected. Okay, cool. Yeah, so what's really cool though is like I said, um, anybody, well, it doesn't matter what you work in. This is a really cool tool. You can easily adapt it. It doesn't have to be out of hotkey, right? Like um, someone might work with uh, cooking and want to have certain cooking channels that they go search or um, they're Python users or they're mechanics, right? And have certain destinations. So that's why I was like, why Why was this thing? Well, I used to call it the HK help you know, search, but it, it's not at all necessarily. It's about it's HK. It is yeah. search on the site is on a site search right it, it, so in your case it's flex finder because it's flexible where you can find stuff right yeah so and it was pretty cool what we realized in one of our stuff to, to make it the dark themed GUI is not that hard right uh, yeah that was really cool all right let's all go right. back into here um get active path now we we had a bug that we saw so that's why that's been edited get active path allows you even if, actually if you well if you ran it if you were on this one it would give you the path to this auto hotkey script um it's right, not so it just because well if you do it from here oh, are you launching right, it yeah I, I don't know what the hotkey is f13 well it depends because if you go look in the preferences you'll see it so it's Control Shift C. Control Shift C. Okay. So here, Control Shift C gives me the right. file path to this script specifically. Right. But if you're an explorer, I, it'll right. give it to you. And you can choose whether to wrap it with quotes or not. Um, right. It's very handy. But a lot of editors. So if you're in site, which actually we should have asked you this, Isaias, is there a way with your toolkit that we could have got the path to the file, the temp file that? If you launch it, you know, if you do something here and you run it, it's now a, a, a temp file, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Would it be possible to get that path? Not that we would want it, but. I would assume so. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, it is always the same name, lifecode.ahk, and it is on the temp folder. Yeah, but there's a separate instance of it, isn't there? No, it's, it's always one, one file. It replaces itself. So okay. Every time I create a new script, like now I, I just do this now. Oh, that's that okay. Would be For some reason, I, but anyway, if you're in beforehand, a, like, like like I, I did have that uh, just to confirm. I did have oh. had it run different multiple instances, okay. and then I just put it into one, okay, because of reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So, yeah, uh, but like <laughs> especially if you're in Word or Excel, it will give you right. the yeah. That's the one. Yeah. yeah which is great, but we built in a lot of programs for it. And if you're in a browser, we don't have to do all the examples, but your browser, if you um, select text, it will take that text and then it'll hyperlink it to the, the page and build a pretty link, which is really cool. Um, oh, yeah, right. it's, a, it's a really great little script. Yeah, I really like it. Get active path. And um, I, I heard somebody, I think it was in one of our videos that he said like, Oh, but in, on on Word or on Office, you could hit Control Shift S to hit Save As, and I think he's not aware that that's not a thing anymore. When you hit Control Shift S, you get this Apply Styles instead, and when you go to the menu, the Save As command does not have a hotkey anymore. You you cannot they, yeah. they don't have a, it, 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 so it is and not even, as it used to be, right? So that's, that's the reason why we need that, right? But if you go back to that save as, you can get the folder or the file name, but you got to take another step to, to actually get, there's there's somewhere in here, I forget where it is. There is a way to get the, the actual oh, file. In the info, it is in the info for, for it's so ludicrous. information kind of thing, like open file location, here it is. Oh, look at that. The, 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 here's the location of it, but not the path. Not, See the copy path listed copy right Copy path, there. right. That, yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah. Real so here. you have to go to the info and go here. They don't have a hotkey for that either. Right. It's yeah. really stupid. Yeah. But um, now with the, with this, you could always hit the same hotkey yeah. independent of the program. And, and you, you can get the same the access. <laughs> right. You can decide what the hotkey is, right? So cool. Yeah. The, um, the media player... So that was the one, and and I don't know if we if Irfan updated it, but we made it where the volume adjusts. And we first had it dynamic, where it was uh, progressively the higher up it was, the the more of an adjustment when you scroll up or down it would make. Um, it was it was acting really weird and buggy, and we finally just said, you know what, it's just 
again, it, we could spend a day on this thing, you know, or we could just sit hard code it and say, if it's below 10, do this. And if it's above 10, do that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we switched over to that. Um, right. The mic mute one. That's a good one. That's a really cool one. Yeah. Yeah. I actually like it. So um, we, we showed it on the hero call last time. <laughs> it was funny because everyone was explaining how it works and then he was muting himself while he was explaining. I was like, yeah, right. I gotta get it. But it is, it is, it is such a cool thing because the problem is certain programs, so for example, Zoom right now, if I mute my microphone, it mutes it in Zoom, but my microphone is still open in any other program that is using it at the same time. And you might think that the mic cannot be used by two programs at the same time, but that's not always the case. I think there's a preference that you allow it to, like uh, when you go to the microphone settings, you, you can set it to allow programs to lock the microphone, but not all programs lock the microphone. So the fact that you muted in one program doesn't mean that you're muted in the other. This allows you to set a hotkey independent of where you are, you just hit the hotkey and your microphone is mute, muted everywhere, right? And and the way how we discover it, well, the way how you discover which one to mute is really cool because it gives you a list of your microphones and actually it's looking better now. It gives me the, that, the that microphone filter. names. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But if you turn off that microphone filter at the bottom, that's why we've we've streamlined it so it's not so confusing like these are really the the when you put that filter oh, no. i was i was missing something because i do have a microphone in one of my headphones on my headsets but yeah here it is this microphone high definition audio when i did this it's not there it's not listed for whatever reason not not sure how that filters well, but it has the word microphone in it yeah right okay. but in any it. case yeah. right in any case what happens is um we can then uh, try to mute one and see here in this area if it stops moving. And as you can see, as I was just talking and it was not moving, then I know that that's the one that I want to mute. Right. And when I select that, then that means that my hotkey is going to apply to that particular microphone. Which, so, which reminds me, we should have a button here to bring up the the preferences to get to your hotkey selection in, in case you want to click right it. from here right uh, well i think let me see hold on oh well it is just selected and that's it but i think we would have to right click here to go to the preferences i guess yeah but and i just think we should have right. a, yeah but I, I, yeah i agree but now what's really cool also is you can both mute that mic or your, your speakers or both um with a hotkey which is again if someone walks in and you know, you, you know, I don't want to stop listening to Isaiah and Irfan talk about on a hockey, I can hit a hockey, and it'll just stop all the sound, which is really great. Uh, right. And then, uh, and then actually, we realized because we're usually sharing our screens in Zoom with the clients, they could mute us, but we could unmute ourselves on their computer. So, it, so we can tell them, hey, we're, we're ready. We have something to show you. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty right. cool. It is really cool. It's a really cool script. It's not quite done, but it's very close. Right. Uh, hey, look, prompt assistant. Now that was one, but we just made an update to it. Um, right. Um, yeah, we, we did a very big update that if you are having, if you have yeah. versions below, so let me show 50, this. What was the other ones? 54. So, oh no, not that one. Um, if you're below this version, you will have problems with prompt assistant because prompt assistant was checking for a URL for given updates, right? We have to we have to change that. And as we change that, the script is gonna say that it cannot find the updates and it's gonna throw an error. That's the problem. So um, we we made an update, I pushed it into um, into the downloads page. So if you go to the place where you usually go to update prompt assistant, you can just get this latest version now and it should be good to go. But everything else is looking good with it. Like, yeah. um, I think they all showed me a few things that yeah. might be broken, but I have to, I'll, I'll say I have to reproduce the problem first in order for me to be able to fix it. What is this? What is the run Windows app? 
that was a, a, a actual tool I I made. Um, I didn't tell you. Sorry. Yeah, but it's <laughs> it, it. Someone had asked on a video we did about running Windows apps, and and I'm like, oh, they're actually it's it's such a nightmare. Ah, right? Microsoft. Oh right, I remember. Yeah. Nightmare. So I did a video uh, on how to both in V1 and V2, a get the actual name of the app, and then actually you launch it with you know with some simple code. So, right. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous that it's that complicated, but I turned it into a function and just made it really easy to first right, get the name and then right. So in the video, no, I watched this one here. This one here doesn't get the name, right? Oh, hold on. It, it in the video, I walk through how to you know how to how grab to get the name, right? Okay, it, yeah, display it, right? Um, and then just how to use it. Cool, really cool. And um, here the discovery tool. I have been using that thing so often. Actually, the ultimate spy with with our client yeah. Danny, right? Yeah. Oh, because yeah. I have to be switching between UIA and the automator discovery tool and the other tools. Just I have to be yeah. switching all the time, right? So yeah, yeah definitely. I was laughing because I just remembered this we I don't know how, but we didn't have the requires. So people someone was trying to launch it with V1. And oh, it was come on. a weird error. And so in the discovery tool. We went and added the requires v2 because it's a v2 script but yeah that's that right why we updated it and and that's a zoom participant counter which i was telling the um it'd be nice to be able to track who's actually showing up to the hero calls we have around 20 people every week there's roughly 15 to 20 people that show up and they, of course they right. change but we i want to be able to tell who's missing and then check in on them and make sure that they're you know doing all right and um Getting their value as well because exactly yeah. the, the biggest value of the hero membership is being in the calls because you can get to ask your questions, learn from other people, get ideas from very interesting stuff that other people are doing. So if you are paying for it, you know, we at least want to know that you're getting the value that you're paying for, right? So right. it is good to know if you haven't attended to even one of the calls, hey, let's 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 well, see if you need something else, you know? Yeah. And earlier, before we started this call, we were talking about, okay, Isaiah, you're going to share your screen. And then I don't know where some of I'm like, oh, you know, be really cool is <laughs> it, like in the hero calls, I use OBS and right. I have it over my head and I'm constantly updating it with URLs to the tools we have. And I'm right. like, what if we made a tool that stayed on our desktop that, right. that it would, and I said, first off, we could have it built into the screen share so we can see it. And then I'm like, wait right. a minute, because we have Dropbox synced, I could type it because Isaiah is usually sharing yeah. a screen, but I know the yeah. URLs. I, so he doesn't have more things to do, right? right I can take right. care of that for him of like remembering where they are and take care of that. And then he said, yeah, but Joe, like, he's like, I watch actually a lot of the videos of the hero calls. And when you're watching the hero call, if someone asked in the chat a question, question. it's not right. on the screen. And so... What if we were to use that to display the question that was asked right. and what we're answering? And I'm like, this is why I want to iterate of like the hero calls, which Isaiah said too. It, one is you can ask us questions, which is a huge value to me. But um, it's also that you're learning, you're getting bouncing ideas off of other people. Because Isaiah and I and Irfan too and there's one, we all come up with different ideas on how to go about doing something and things that right. we could do, right? And right. that's where I was saying like, nobody is as smart as multiple people. Like we all come up yeah, with interesting exactly. stuff, yeah, but when right. you talk to other people, you get much more interesting ideas and you can save a lot of time because someone else will say, Hey, cause I'm, I don't know if I was, I think I was talking to someone else about it, but in my, un, I'm sorry, in grad school, we had, we were doing like a focus group, kind of a, a group think and someone brought it up. They're like, no, Joe, any idea is a good idea. There, and yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, well, you're kind of negative, and you'll you're like, that's not the place. When the generating ideas, every idea is a good idea. I'm like, oh, okay. So right. we were we were creating um, pens, and they're like, what would you do? Well, I would get a billion dollars out of my mattress, and I'd pay marketing with the billion dollars. And they're like, Joe, you're that's stupid. I'm like, that's what my point. Not every idea yeah. is a good idea. Like, there are rules being applied. Right, like right, when right. I'm saying, "Hey, that may not work because of this," I'm not trying to be negative, right? I'm just trying to say <laughs> the ideas have merit. Uh, but right. my point being, that's what we do with each other. We critically, you know, discuss it and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like some people think, 
you should never criticize an idea. Well, it, you know. No, yeah, exactly. But, and then, and that's the thing. Like, well, we can trigger by by mentioning something. We can trigger an idea in somebody else, right? Right. Now, out of all of the ideas that we have, some of them are good, some of them are bad. We just have to figure out which one is which one. If you're alone, if you're doing this by yourself, it's, it's not that you cannot do it. It's just that it takes way longer. Yeah, as soon right. as somebody comes into the group and they talk to me about, oh, I want to send some multi-form part data into a website, I right away stop him and say, you know what, just, just stop there. Don't waste your time on that one. Not because it's too hard. It's because it's difficult to understand because I have been through that, right? So I, I will save you time. And of course, you can still do it. You can still test it. We're never, we're never going to tell you don't do it. But the fact that you can save time by listening to another person saying, oh, I tried that, you know, and it didn't work because of this, then somebody else is going to chime in. Did you try that then? And as soon as you get that, you, you, you get a lot of value because you, you, you go with one little question and you get many answers of many other things and you learn a lot. That's what most of the people in the group have yeah. actually explained that they like about it. It reminds me of when we were working on the HK Script Hub and you and I were like, well, how are, oh, we should be able to disable a hotkey. And you and I were like really trying to think it through. And I'm like, well, let me see if Maester if there's around. Yeah. And then Maester's like, well, why don't you just write one to just block it? And, said, and he yeah. just totally rethought. And, and, and we were like, duh, obviously, right? But we were trying to come up with this really sophisticated solution. And he just thought of things differently, right? And it's, it's why... Yeah. It's really helpful to bounce ideas off of other people. It's not that any of us are necessarily smarter. A lot of, sometimes it's more knowledgeable in a given area, right? They, a lot of people come to the hero group and say, we're trying to do this. And often they'll say, this is how I'm going. And we're like, there's 12 other ways you could do it, right? And, and we try to tailor it to, like you said, some people go to like UIA all the time, which we both know, whew, like you better know what you're doing if you're doing going to UIA. Um, yeah. and we'll find it often have a different approach. It's a little bit easier, but not always, right? It's just at least you have someone to bounce it off of. So right. anyway, th um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video. If you learned something, it really helps us out. We're releasing videos three times a week and uh, consider joining the Hero Club. It's, we have a it's sign on, now, right? Yeah, there's a there's a, a trial period for a buck ninety nine for the first month. And, uh, and I, what I would say is if you do that, which I highly encourage you to do, it's, it's a great deal. But make sure you both join Telegram and yeah. join a couple of the calls because right. you it's... will see what it is all about, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye, guys.